Let's talk about a function that seems useful, but secretly causes chaos in your workbooks. Indirect. You enter a cell reference or a defined name as text, and indirect turns that text into a real reference. It feels advanced and powerful because it overcomes limitations we used to experience, but it's one of the top reasons spreadsheets break, slow down, and become a nightmare to debug. In this video, I'll show you why it's time to move on and how to replace it with modern Excel features that are faster and easier to maintain. Let's give Indirect some credit, because for years it was one of Excel's clever tricks. The basic syntax is it takes the reference as text, like D7 or Sheet 2, B5. Then there's an optional reference style. If true or omitted, it uses A1 style referencing. That's the column letter and row number combination we're all familiar with. If false, it uses R1C1 style, which is where rows and columns are numbered. As a basic example, if we enter a cell reference, B8, inside double quotes, so it's treated as text, indirect turns that text into a live cell reference, returning the value from cell B8, which we can see here contains elderberry. You'll often see it used with other formulas to construct a cell reference from text in other cells, like here, we're concatenating the letter B with the number in cell C13 to return the cell reference B6, which we can see contains cherry. We can also use it with defined names. For example, this list of fruits is called fruit list, and the vegetables called veg list. And I can use indirect to reference the name in cell C16, which contains one of the defined names, and have indirect return the list of items defined by the name. And I can click on the drop down here and choose a different list and indirect dynamically updates, which is a cool party trick. And for a long time, indirect was the go to tool for making your workbooks more dynamic, but that flexibility comes at a cost. For example, here I've used indirect with XLOOKUP to dynamically sum the data from the separate sheets for each month. But if I rename this sheet tab, let's say Jan 25, and we go back, you can see the formula breaks. Now this wouldn't happen with a regular cell reference, not to mention indirect is a volatile function, meaning Excel recalculates every time anything changes, even if the change has nothing to do with that formula, and this can seriously slow down your workbooks. And it doesn't work when referencing closed workbooks, but then not many functions do. Let's break this down by use case so you can find the best alternative based on what you're trying to do. If you've been using indirect to pull data from different sheets like this, where the sheet tab matches one of the cell labels, enabling you to construct the reference using indirect and then copy that formula to the cells in the table. And while it works, a more robust way to generate a report like this is with Power Query. Your data can be in separate files or in the same file like I have here with a table for each month. And if we look at the table design tab, you can see the table name has the year and month, which will help me easily collate them. So with the data in the same file like this, I'm going to go to the data tab of the ribbon, and I'm going to get data from other sources, and then right at the bottom, blank query. This opens the Power Query editor in a separate window, and in the formula bar, I'm going to type equals Excel dot current workbook. Now Power Query is case sensitive, so you need to type it exactly as seen here. Then open and closing parentheses and press enter. This lists all the tables and defined names in your file. Remember, my data is formatted in Excel tables and you can see them all here. I'll filter the rows to only include text that begins with FY. Remember all the tables that I want to collate begin with FY followed by the year and then the month. Click OK, and now I can click on this double-headed arrow at the top of the content column to expand that data. I'm going to deselect use original column name as prefix and click OK. You can see the data for each individual table is now in one big table. I've got a little bit of cleaning up to do. I'll start by removing FY from this column. So on the Transform tab, I'm going to replace values. I'm going to find FY and replace it with nothing. Let's also replace this underscore with a hyphen. So again, replace values. I'm going to find the underscore and replace it with a hyphen and click OK. Doing this just enables me to change this data type here 
which is currently set to text, to a date. When I do that, I now have the period or date each row relates to. Let's left click and drag that column to the front and I'll double click to rename it period. Now you shouldn't have any totals in your source data, so selecting that column, press the delete key. I'm going to set the data type for these columns to a decimal number. So on the data type drop down, I want decimal number. And this last one here is text. I'm going to select the product and period columns as holding down shift to select them both. And then right click and I'm going to unpivot other columns. It's going to unpivot these columns that are split out by country and put the data into a correct tabular layout. So now I have a column for the country. Let's rename that and the value. This tabular layout makes it super easy to summarize my data with formulas and pivot tables, and I won't have to use the volatile indirect function. Now notice in the applied steps pane on the right, Power Query has recorded all the steps I've taken, much like a macro recorder. So if I add a new sheet to this file for January 2026, I can get an update to my data with the click of one button, which I'll show you later. Now to summarize the data in the report layout, I want to go to the Home tab, Close and Load, and I'll Close and Load 2. And here I can choose how I want to view the data. I can put it in a table, which will allow me to use formulas to summarize it, or my preference is a pivot table report. I'm going to put it on an existing worksheet, which I've already set up here. We'll pop it there and click OK. Let's drag the pivot table field list over closer to the pivot table and we can build the report. So I want to look at the product in the rows. I'm going to summarize the value and let's put the period in the columns. Now you notice it's automatically grouped the dates. Let's right click and go into the grouping. And I want to also group it by years, and that's going to allow me to add more months going forward and have them correctly grouped. Now it's added in the days. Let's deselect that so I've got it summarized by years and months. All right, we'll dock that back over on the right. And I'm going to right click and just go into the number formatting. And let's give it a comma separator and no decimal places. That'll just make it a bit tidier. And one more thing, I'll make these column widths a bit narrower so we can see it all in one screen. OK, that's better. So with just a few clicks, we've recreated this summary table that we were using indirect for, and we've done it in a pivot table, which is far more robust and not volatile at all. And when you get new data, I'll just copy January sheet to replicate that. I'm just going to pop it in here. The key will be to make sure the table name is correct. So we'll change this to 202601 and then go back to my pivot table all I need to do is go to the data tab and click refresh all. And just like that, January 2026 is now included in my report. There's no risk of formula errors and no volatile functions slowing down my file. If you want to get good at this fast, check out my Power Query course. You'll learn how to merge and clean messy data, automate repetitive tasks, and build reports that update themselves with a single click. Thousands of students have used it to replace laborious tasks and unreliable formulas with clean, fast solutions. You can find the link in the description and pinned comment. If you're using indirect to toggle between different defined names, like summing Q1 sales or Q2 sales, like I have here, then you could try using the switch function. The expression in this case is the name defined in cell G5. Then if this cell contains Q1 sales, I want to return the column of the table called Q1 sales. So I know my table is called table sales and the column name is Q1 sales. And let me just select that control C to copy because I'm going to reuse that. Alternatively, if the value in G5 is Q2 sales, I want to return the column called Q2 sales. Close switch, close sum, press enter. Now I get exactly the same result. And while the switch formula is much longer than indirect, it's more efficient because it's not volatile like indirect. Plus, I haven't had to define any names for the table. And because it's longer, it's actually easier to audit and troubleshoot because we can see exactly what it's referencing. For dependent drop-down lists that change based on another cell, many people reach for indirect. But there's a better way using the filter function 
and it works in Excel 2021 onward and Excel Online. Let me show you how it works. First, organize your data into a structured format, for example, a two column list, where the first column in this case is the country and the second column is the state. I have formatted this data in an Excel table. You can see it's called table regions and you can easily format your data in a table using the keyboard shortcut control T. Beside the table, I'm going to construct the formulas for the drop down lists. The first list is for the country and I want this in a horizontal array. So I'm going to use a transpose function to flip it. I also want it sorted. So we use sort and then I only want one instance for each country. So we use unique to reference the country column in the table, close unique, close sort and close transpose. There's my list of countries and I've got a little bit of conditional formatting that places some underlines in for me. Now, if I add any countries to this table, this formula here will automatically include them and that's going to feed through to my data validation lists. Next, I need to populate the regions for each country and I can use the filter function to reference the region column, the criteria for what to include, that will be where the country equals the country selected here, comma. If it's empty, I'm going to return blank, close filter. So there's my states for Australia. All I need to do is copy this formula. Now you need to control C, copy it, not left click and drag. And I'm going to extend it past the current list of countries just to allow for more countries to be added. Notice that when there's no data returned, filter returns are blank. So we don't have any formula errors there. Now I can insert the drop down lists. So I'm just going to select a few cells for country on the data tab, data validation. Here I want a list and the source for the country is going to be this cell here, followed by the hash sign. The hash sign tells Excel to return all the items in the spilled array of countries enabling that data validation list to dynamically expand and contract with the data. I'll click OK. And then for the region, again, data validation. Here I want a list, but this time I'm going to use the X lookup function because we need to find what countries entered in the first cell. I need to F4 three times to make that reference relative. I'm looking up the list of countries and note I'm allowing for more countries to be added. That reference can be absolute, comma. And what am I returning? I'm returning the list of regions and again expanding out to column P to allow for more countries and regions to be added. Close parentheses on XLOOKUP. And finally, add a hash on the end to tell Excel to return the entire spilled array from the formula in that cell, not just a single value. Click OK. And now let's test it out. We'll choose Australia. We get Australia states, Japan, we get Japanese regions, UK returns counties, and US, we get states. Perfect. And because I'm not using the volatile indirect function, having loads of cells with these data validation lists is not going to have dire performance implications. If you've been using indirect to build dynamic, flexible formulas, it's time to take things to the next level with Lambda. This is a powerful function that lets you create your own custom functions. If you haven't tried it yet, now's the time. It could completely change the way you work in Excel. Watch this video next to see how it works. I'll walk you through it step by step.